Do you ever find yourself paying for multiple tools just to build out one workflow? It's an API there, it's an API here, and it's really death by a thousand cuts. Simple functionality like converting a PDF, doing a transcription, maybe doing some web scraping, all seem to cost money through another API. But what if I said it didn't have to be the case? And what if I said I was saving thousands of dollars by building out my own functionality with an AWS to replace those APIs that I was previously paying a lot of money for month to month that really were only being used on a case by case basis. As a quick introduction, I'm Hunter Sneed, the creator of Getting Automated. Getting Automated is focused on providing small and medium sized businesses with resources that they can use to introduce practical AI and automated workflows into their business to drive efficiency and really keep up in this competitive landscape. I also have a community that I just launched for builders that wanna go ahead and learn the intricacies that go into actually building up the workflows, getting them into production within a business and everything that comes in between. Lastly, I run Workflowsy, which is my automation consultancy for those who don't wanna do it themselves or maybe have a more complex use case. Anyway, enough about that. Let's go ahead and jump right into this use case. Anyone who's been automating for some time knows the pain of having to go find another tool to pay for to do one specific thing in a workflow that's not native to your workflow orchestration tool, such as Make or NADN. And I know it all too well. There are many things that I do on a regular basis where I just, it kills me to pay the extra 10, 15, 20, maybe $50 a month for a specific tool that really is something that I don't use often enough. These are tools that a lot of times I only use a handful of times throughout the month, but I'm locked into some sort of package that has a much higher consumption limit than what I actually need. I may only need it 10, 20, 50, 100 times a month. And a lot of times you're paying for 300, 500, 1,000, 10,000 usages. And so you have all this unused consumption that you're essentially paying for whether you use it or not. And so to solve this, there's a lot of times open source libraries that do this for you. A lot of times the tools that you're actually using are probably even based on an open source library that they're using under the hood and then just putting a fancy API on top of to make it easier for you to use. So ask yourself, is it really worth paying the API fees on a month to month basis when you could recreate the same tooling yourself in probably less than an hour? So today we're gonna to go over how I use AWS and NADN to go ahead and recreate some of these simple tools that have now become essential in all my workflows that I build out specifically for the repeatable use cases like, again, PDF to JPEG for OpenAI vision capabilities and some other components. For those who don't know what AWS Lambda is, AWS Lambda is a function as a service offering from AWS. It's often referred to as serverless. The whole idea is basically you can go ahead and write a Python function or a couple functions and you can go ahead and actually then go and deploy that to AWS. And what's nice is typically you have to have some sort of server that you're running that you're not using probably 99% of the time but that 0.01% of the time that you wanna use it, you have to actually then pay for the entire month for the usage that's not happening. And so with serverless, it kind of flips that on its head and you only pay for the time that you use. So if your function only runs for three or four seconds, you only pay for three or four seconds. So as you can imagine, if you're going ahead and you're running functions that are pretty quick to execute and you're not running it that often, it's incredibly cheap. A lot of the AWS Lambda functions that I run are less than a penny a month. For, for how much I'm actually using them. And some that I'm using pretty frequently may get up to a couple cents to 10, maybe 20 cents a month. And so you can go ahead and recreate these tools for a fraction of what it costs to pay for a monthly package. And once you set it up, you really don't have to touch it again. It's in AWS and it's ready to use whenever you need to. Beyond that, NADN makes it really easy as they have a native Lambda node that you can go ahead and plug right into and integrate it right into any workflow that you currently have today. So how do you make a serverless function? So I know for some of you, creating a serverless function sounds pretty intense or maybe a little bit more than you bargained for, but I promise you it's easy. So what you can do is just like any other piece of code, all you have to do is just go and actually write the functions out as you would locally, and then make some slight modifications to actually move it up to AWS. I'm not gonna go ahead and go through step-by-step -step here today, but essentially you can go ahead and ask Cursor or OpenAI or any of the generative AI tools that, that are out there today to create you a Lambda function that does X, Y, and Z. And odds are it'll probably get it right on the first time and that's all it's gonna take. Then from there, it's just a matter of going and actually standing that up within AWS. I provide scripts for how to actually do that within this video today. 
Um, but again, Cursor or OpenAI or anything else like that that you want to go ahead and search has ample documentation and instructions for how you can actually go about deploying those yourself based on your specific use case. But basically what you do is you create a function and you call out what the actual runtime is. That could be Python, Go, JavaScript, Java. There's so many different languages that it supports. Then from there, you go ahead and you add the code. Again, that's basically just defining what's gonna happen within your function and what you expect it to return. The whole thing with this is you go ahead and you pass an input into Lambda from NADEN and you get an output out that NADEN can then go and work with throughout your workflow. Sometimes you do have to manage dependencies. So with any of these programming languages, you typically have different libraries that are both included in the actual language and some that are external. And so in the case that you are actually using external libraries, you may need to do, go ahead and create, at least in AWS's case, what is called a Lambda layer. The Lambda layer is what allows you to go ahead and use those external libraries with your actual code. Again, super easy to do. I, I included it in my actual demo today, and it's something that's very well documented, both in terms of traditional documentation and any chatbot or LLM that you wanna go ahead and ask questions to about. And then it's just a matter of integrating that Lambda Functions node into your NADN workflow. Again, we'll demonstrate that today. Okay, so this goes a little bit in the weeds, but I thought it was worthwhile to mention. I won't go too far into this section, but basically there's different ways to go ahead and build out layers depending on what your actual dependency is. There's ways just to use the actual Python package itself, or there's ways to create Docker containers that you can go ahead and run your code from. Again, I have this all in the actual demo that I'll be showing shortly. All right, so what does this actually look like? It's actually dead simple. Basically what I'm doing in this workflow is I'm going and I'm just taking a file from Google Drive, I'm converting it to base64, so that way it can be passed into the AWS Lambda function, and then I'm getting my actual JPEG files out. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Okay, I've got the workflow here, and you can see it's a pretty simple workflow. All it's really doing is going and downloading a file from Google Drive, and then from there it's extracting the contents of that file into base64, which is a format that the Lambda expects it to be in. Then the Lambda will actually go and process and convert the PDF pages to JPEG images, and then we'll actually get it back in a zip file, well, really a base64 version of the zip file that we go ahead and unzip and then we can do whatever we want to with those actual JPEG files. That could be going ahead and passing it to OpenAI, that could be uploading it to Dropbox, really whatever you wanna do, it's up to you at that point, but you have it in a JPEG format, you can do, again, anything that you would need to do with those JPEGs. So within this, what you can see here is, again, I'm just passing in a PDF file that's got multiple pages, I believe it's some sort of purchase order, then from there, what I'm actually doing is I'm extracting the data from that. And so we'll actually run up to this step and I can show you. And you can see that we have data going in and then we get this base64 file out. And then from there, what we're doing is we're just taking that and you can make the input for the Lambda, whatever you want, but this one's dead simple. You've got a body and then you're going ahead and you're actually just passing in the base64 version of that PDF that we went ahead and just converted. So you do that. And then what you'll see is you actually get a base64 version out as well. So if we click on show data, what you'll see is the actual body for a zip file that has the actual contents of those JPEGs within it. And so then last but not least, we'll go to unzip and get files. Now this function right here, all it does is it just unzips a zip file for me. And that way I can go ahead and actually use this as, as I would want to. I created this using OpenAI's ChatGPT. You can create a bunch of these NADN code nodes just from using ChatGPT or something that's comparable and telling it what you actually want. Typically gets it pretty close to being right the first time. Um, but yeah, we'll go ahead and we'll test it. And then what you'll see here is I've got three different data objects, one for each page. And so that way I can go ahead and I, I can again go and pass those to a different workflow, upload them, do whatever I want to with them. And so you may be asking, why would I do this over using some sort of API? And really the cost is a big driver, but again, you also own this. So you can do whatever you want with this. And so I'll go ahead and I'll flip over to the Lambda code to show you that it is pretty simple to actually do this. And that way you can go ahead and make the determination for yourself if you wanna save thousands too by using this approach. So basically what we have here is we've got a Lambda function. And a Lambda function is again, just the actual code that runs when you go ahead and you send something to it as an input. And so within this, you can see that this is an AWS Lambda function that converts PDF to JPEGs using a Docker container. And so within this, we've got some information here around what we're actually doing. Again, I generated this whole thing using ChatGPT and cursor and just made slight modifications. It's really part of my kind of day-to-day -day workflow of, hey, how can I accelerate my development? 
And so this is a big part of it. So I generated this by saying, hey, I want a PDF to JPEG converter. And it went ahead and it created this for me. And so what you can see here is basically it goes ahead and it gets that PDF. You can also pass in a URL as well, if that's easier of a PDF. And then from there, what it'll actually do is it'll go and it will take the content and convert it. And as you can see here, it's using an open source library called PDF to image. And so there's tons of libraries like this that are available that serve a utility or a function that again, you're probably paying through the nose for when it comes to actually having an API available to do it. And you can do this yourself. And so I've got this again, it's not that long, a little over 120 lines of code. And I've also got a Docker file and the Docker file just basically defines, Hey, this is what the code's going to run within AWS. And so I go ahead and I have this and then my deploy script actually goes and deploys it all for you. So you don't have to go and deal with that headache yourself. But I also have a readme that goes over how this all works and kind of the intricacies of this. And that way you can kind of understand it a little bit more if you have any questions about what goes into this and how to kind of understand this end to end. So I've already covered this a little bit, but there's really a lot of reasons, especially in this world of LLMs, why you'd actually want to convert something from a PDF, which is a proprietary format to something like a JPEG that's a little bit more of an open standard that you can go ahead and do something with. And so I see a ton of use cases with this. Again, I was paying a monthly service before to actually be able to do this, and now I don't have to with this actual approach. Let's go over why this really matters. So the big thing is it's so cheap. People think of AWS and they don't think cheap, but in this case, they're actually wrong. This is a, an unbelievably cost-effective way to leverage AWS and other cloud providers that people really don't think about often. Because again, you're only paying for the time that you're actually using the service. So if we went back and saw how quickly that Lambda function ran, I think it was under a second. You're only paying for a second each time it runs. And that second of time in terms of cost is almost next to nothing. It's fractions of fractions of fractions of a penny. And so I have a table here that breaks down the cost difference between all of these, but essentially I can do a thousand pages for around two cents. Whereas with anything else, I'm going to be locked into some sort of plan or charged a lot more based on a consumption based model that again has quite a markup on top. And so if you're doing any sort of significant data extraction, you can actually see this start to reduce the cost pretty quickly and pay for itself in the hour or so that it takes for you to set up multiple times over right away. I want to spend a second to articulate why I think this rocks. There's really a lot of reasons, but cost savings is a big one. With this, again, you're saving so much money over paying for an API service that again, you may or may not use throughout the month, but it doesn't matter. You're still going to pay that monthly fee. Beyond that, you have full control for what you actually want to do with this. So that could be that maybe you want to go ahead and export in a different format than JPEG. You can go ahead and do that. Maybe you want to go ahead and have that file actually saved somewhere else as well within your code. You can do that. Maybe you want to go ahead and use a different model and it requires a different format that needs to be passed in. You can do that as well. It scales basically infinitely. All the largest websites on the internet run on AWS. And so scaling will never be an issue for you. And again, it's future proof. If you want to use a different library, if you want to change your approach, if you want to build a net new tool that runs in Lambda, you can go ahead and do that. And most of the time, like I said, it only takes an hour or less. A lot of times I can do these in 15 minutes. And so again, integrating this into your workflow will probably become a pretty common pattern that you get used to because you see how powerful this is and what you can do with it in such a short time and a low investment. So what are the next steps if you wanted to go ahead and get started yourself? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make the GitHub available for you to go ahead and review the code and use it as you see fit. It's got a great starting point in terms of showing you a Docker file, the actual Lambda function, as well as the deploy script that goes and deploys it for you. Feel free to stand this up for yourself. It's again, a pattern that I use all the time. And I think you'll go ahead and start using it quite a bit too. If you want to go ahead and modify this, or you want to go ahead and build something that maybe is similar in approach, but a different function or different purpose, you can go ahead and use uh, any of these AI supported IDEs. Uh, they make it really easy to go ahead and iterate on it. And you can, like I said, you can probably go ahead and build out this code in just a couple chat responses back and forth with something like cursor. Then from there, you can go ahead and customize this all you want. You can have 10 versions of the same Lambda running in an AWS account. It doesn't matter. If you're not using it, you're not being charged for it. And that's the beauty of it. And so again, something like this is just such a killer for these SaaS tools that again, I was paying through the nose for that I really didn't need. If you like videos like this that are steeped a little bit more in the technology side of things with a strong emphasis on the foundations and actually solving a business problem, 
you're gonna love my new community I just launched. This community is meant for builders that wanna go ahead and actually roll their sleeves up to go ahead and build out automations in a practical, useful way for businesses. I go ahead and I detail out some of the steps that I did to actually go ahead and build this and show you the behind the scenes so that way you get a better idea of what goes into this and how you can do it for yourself. If you like this video, please, please, please go and subscribe. It means the world to me and it'll help me continue to go ahead and create more videos like this going forward. Also, if there's something you wanna see, go ahead and comment it in the comment section. I love to hear your feedback and it heavily influences what I actually go and create next. But anyway, thank you so much for joining me today and I'm looking forward to creating more automation series, business-based videos for you in the future. Lastly, if you wanna go ahead and get in touch with me, go ahead and reach out. I love hearing from you all. You can reach me at hunteratgettingautomated.com, my website, my community. Really, don't hesitate to reach out. This is a passion of mine and I love talking automation with others. So with that being said, good luck automating and have a great day.